Hello, 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 hello guys. Welcome back to another video. This is the Football Connect. I'm your host Sam and we are back again with another one as we will be looking at all the games that are going to be played this week. We have some amazing games that we're going to be looking at and we want to try to predict how the season, how the week or how the lineup of the game will look like at the end of this one. So this is the prediction show people. Do me a favor, click the like button, subscribe to the Connect and we are back again with the Football Connect. But before we go to football, Let's talk about some new introductions that are going to be put into football. So according to the news that were bro which was brought today to the rest of the world, that FIFA clears up the proposal that they'll see left referees seeing uh, that they'll see referees given blue cards with fans divided on the issue. Yes, we are all divided in the issue. So let's try to explain what the FIFA is talking about. So they are saying FIFA has responded to the proposal to hand the referees blue cards in a move that will allow match officials to sin bin players. In other words, what this means is that currently whenever a, ref a referee is not happy about some tackles, they just give yellow cards. And so many yellow cards, you get a red card. For example, the red card that Konate got, you'd wonder that it was not like similarly or even better off than what we saw happening from Gabriel. But the interesting part is this, Gabriel get away with one yellow card while Konate got a red card. So th those are some decisions that maybe could have been what forced the sin bin to actually happen. So what exactly is the sin bin? What exactly does this really blue card really represent? Remember, we have these problems of the things that we're complaining about. When we a player kicks the ball away, he gets a yellow card. Or when a player tries to go fight with the referee, he gets a yellow card and stuff like that. So... I don't know exactly how far this is going, but what we are being told by the football association, they are saying that players will be punished with, with the blue cards whenever they try to go do like what Man City does on top of the referees whenever they are fighting, or when Bruno Fernandes is throwing hands or even trying to attack referees for the officials or the other ones that will be outside. The players will be getting what they call the blue card, which means that they go outside, wait a bit, and try to find themselves, and uh, maybe come back in the game whenever they're feeling it. Okay, so the problem that we have had with this one is this. We have so many tacticals or the people who say that they've lived for the culture of the game and they love the game the way it is. But let's face it, people. Every single time the game has come on to something else, there are always rules that are changing. We didn't know of the VAR, it is them. We are complaining about it, but it's also a rule which has been put. How many times have we seen the 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 goalkeeper rules being changed on how to take a pen, how, the, how they should save on a penalty and stuff like that? So many things are always being changed by the when we come to football, when it comes to football rules and stuff like that. The rule book has been written so many times in this recent years that now people no longer actually understand where the tackle happens. Let's talk about, for example, where people, how people should be caught offside. You'd see that it used to be the whole body or any part of the body. Now they're talking about it has to start from this angle. There are a lot of things that are always changing. And I think we can also put this blue card in it as well as one of those decisions where we are going to see exactly what happens to what happen what will really happen does this mean that players will stop from trying to go and uh, wrestle a ref or try to fight with the referee or something like that and th is the team allowed to make a substitute to a player who has been seen being and what does that mean does that player means that he has to save that same you know that same now time that the player who's in sin bin is saving and how many sin bins do you have to get or yellow uh, blue cards you have to get for you to be given a red card or oh, how many and which one is the biggest of the them of the blue card or the yellow card we want to know exactly where things stands right now because of course we are going to see a lot of players going out of the field it means that the card holds value because it takes the player out of this one. So does it mean that before you go to the red card, you actually have to pass through the blue card? There's a lot of things that we still need some understanding over and actually understand where to go from this. Not exactly saying that I'm coming here to complain like what other people are doing, complaining about what this thing, what this blue card is going to destroy football, how it's going to work. Let's not look at the fact that you are worried of how your beloved game is being changed. Let's actually try to find out exactly the validity of this card 
what's gonna happen and also i don't think i've seen yet in all the articles that i've been read, re, re, reading where exactly or oh, this scene being cut will be introduced does this mean does this mean it will be introduced next year 2025 2026 season or what does this mean because what the fifa media just said was that fifa wished to clarify the reports of so-called the blue card at elite level football club are incorrect and premature any such trials is implemented should be limited to testing in the response manner at a lower level position position and uh, it's it's something that is there on on x so you should go check it out because they are trying to give some clarity over this at lower level position the a position that fifa intends to reattract when the agenda in terms of the discuss of the ifb agm or two match or, or on the two of match or something like that so it means that this is something that they are still going to try to test they're not even sure yet how they're going to put it out so he, of course the fact that they've given an, an allow in terms of it being tested into the lower leagues or in into the leagues where they always to try to do their low their testings and see what happens then maybe we might see being introduced maybe in 2026 2027 season you never know there's still some time to find out exactly where this will go but at this moment people know that the scene being could be coming to food boys we know it but let's just not try to throw it away let's give it time and find out what's going to happen as we go forward anyway let me know your thoughts in the comment section over the scene being are you a fan of it do you agree with it do you even like it what are you expecting there are so many people who are complaining about this but we're going to give it time let's find out what happens as we move on so do me a favor click the like button as we go back to the prediction of the week so we have interesting games that are going to be played here people as we try to preview all those games we have months City playing against Everton, Wolves playing against Brentford, which is by the way tomorrow, Fulham playing against Bournemouth, Tottenham Hotspurs playing against Brighton, Luton City playing against Sheffield. Trust me, this one's gonna be an exciting one. I'm telling you about that one. Liverpool playing against Burnley, we have Nottingham Forest playing against Newcastle, and we also have the Hammers going to uh, Arsenal coming to the Hammers. That one's gonna be an exciting one. I'm telling you, Aston Villa play with manchester united and crystal palace play against chelsea those are all the games that are going to be played this one the bigger games to be honest when you look at it it's actually west ham versus arsenal and also aston villa versus united those are the games that we should be keeping our eye on because as much as the arsenal fans celebrated like crazy they lost to the hammers that they're on home ground now they're going to the hammers home ground never know home advantage could be something exciting me this season let's see what happens people do me a favor click the like button subscribe to the connect let's talk about aston villa versus manchester united united have gone back to back wins the other game winning by 4-3 and the other game actually winning by three goals to nil they kept a clean sheet for the first time after a long period of time one thing that is really exciting about the united oh he's out sander martinez is injured right he was one of the guys who had come in and it seemed like was stable and was giving what we call a stable feeling at the back. Marcus Rashford still doing his own thing but coming to prove himself again worthy in the game. So there's always those things that we need to keep an eye on to see how things are going to play out like. But Aston Villa just lost to Chelsea. And according to the reports that I've heard because I did not actually manage to watch the game, they said that the Aston Villa team that played against Chelsea was not really a team that we could <coughs> sink our teeth into or even our eyes into and say that they were sort of a stronger team. They actually played with, with a team that was less weak, according to the reports I've heard. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen over this game because it's, it's in the Super Sunday for a reason. This is a big game we need to keep an eye on. Let's find out how it's going to look like and I can't wait. Do me a favor though, click the like button, subscribe to the connect. My prediction is that Aston Villa are actually going to win this game. They lost to United before I think when they went to Old Trafford. But now they're at their home ground which now it's no longer that crazy place that people are afraid of. But they need to prove something. And one thing that we know, smaller teams, they do their level best when they have to prove something to the world. So that's what I'm believing could happen in this game. And I see nothing but an Astor Villa win. I think they're going to win by two goals to, to one. Yeah, I think 
let's keep the whole and the lift going. I think they'll score a goal. Ganache will struggle in this game. I don't know. Just a feeling. Anyway, as we move on to the next bigger game, West Ham versus Arsenal. Arsenal coming from that Liverpool victory. I remember last season when Liverpool were having one of the worst, and I'm sorry I'm using Liverpool of all the teams, we're having one of the worst periods not performing so well, and I remember that they, after beating United by seven goals to nil, they looked like they were moving up. They went to the next game and they lost to the Bournemouth. And I felt like uh, when you watch the way Arsenal were playing, it felt like they concentrated that former week, that day to put that level best, they are all into this game. Does that not going to have an impact over how they go forward into the season? Or maybe ju that's just me looking at it in the wrong way. Maybe they will play so well, maybe they'll do so well, they'll not even be affected over this. But it's just something to keep an eye on. My prediction is that West Ham may actually win this game by three goals to two or three goes to one. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. You might disagree with me because I'm a Liverpool fan. I get that. I always get that. The other big game we need to keep an eye is Everton. Le Mans City playing against Everton. Of course, we always talk about Everton being one of those teams. But, you know, I actually discovered some crazy stats today. Do you know the keeper with the worst serve percentage in the in the league right now to who? It's Edison. And he's playing to the Centurion, the team that is called to the, the best. One thing that makes Edison good is his fit. Of course, we know that. We always acknowledge that that is good with his fit. But he's one of the worst goalkeepers when it comes to save with it, to save with his hand. And I'm curious to see how it's going to with what we saw Vicario going through against Everton in that game. Man City, of course, has the upper hand. They'll score goals. I'm sure that they're going to win this game by four goals to two or something like that. But I'm sure that Everton will score something in terms of the, how they're going to do it, how they're going to put pressure. Let's see how the game goes on like anyway. Wolves are playing against Brentford and that's a good game, I'm telling you. Because Brentford are a team that can just rise from anywhere. Ivor Tony, we saw what he's been doing. Now he's going to be playing against Wolves, the Wolverhampton Wanderers. The team that just surprise surprise in the last game beat Chelsea by four goals to two so there is some belief in this team it's gonna be exciting how that one plays out but my my prediction is that Wolves will win this by three goals to one Fulham are playing against Bournemouth in a tie that I actually think is gonna be full of surprises because Fulham for me has really been a team that I cannot put my hand to the Drew is Burnley you expect them to, to wall up Burnley the way Burnley has been doing. But they drew with Burnley. Anyway, let's see how the game will go on. Like, But my prediction is that the visitors will win this game. They might win it by three goals. 2-2. Two -two. As we move on, Tottenham Spurs versus Brighton. That, now that's an interesting one. The Zerbi has been having one crazy season. In fact, he has failed to win in some most of the current times. And I think Tottenham Hotspurs will have enough to cause chaos. Son is back, by the way, from the Asia Cup. So that actually gives some boost into this team. They have some belief that they can do something. My prediction is actually going to be a 2-2 draw. I feel like no one is going to lose and no one is going to win in this game. That's how I just feel it like. Let's see what happens. As we look at Luton, who are going to be playing against Sheffield United. Luton are going to win this game by four goals to two. Luton. Because I feel like Sheffield are out. They're out of the league. Luton are the surprise package that I told you to be in the beginning of the season. That's still in it. Go check it out. The video is there up there when you just enter the Football Connect page. You'll see the video. I told you that Luton will be the surprise package. And at this moment, what we've seen is nothing. But they are the surprise package. So they're going to win this game. Liverpool versus Burnley. Now that's an exciting game. The game that follows after Man City goes on top of the league for some minutes. It's going to be exciting. Liverpool has to give a response over what they did against an Arsenal team that opened us up. Let's be honest. Arsenal opened Liverpool up. We have some injury updates though. Thiago Alcantara is out injured. I actually heard some rumors and news that Ajavi Alonso, if he's coming to Liverpool, he would want Thiago Alcantara to remain as a player coach who he will try to integrate into his team as he becomes one of the 
manager or the coaches that helps up the team of Liverpool. Also, I've heard some rumors that Thiago Alcantara could leave as well. So there's an interesting to see how that one's going to play out like. But then we will need some response over that performance that we showed. We need some serious performance. And I can't wait to see how that one play out. Liverpool. Liverpool will win this game. I have a feeling they will actually overdo it. They win it by four goals to nil. I have a feeling we're going to keep a clean sheet against Burnley. Especially that it's at Enfield where the other stand has been opened. Now it's a full, it's almost about to become a full stand or it's already a full stand. Please tell me in the comment section. So I think Liverpool win this game by four goals to nil. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. The last game is Nottingham Forest playing against Newcastle. That's the biggest game. I have no idea what the Saudi people are doing with the TV people. And why is that we, Newcastle always get the last spot? But that's what we're seeing here. Anyway, Newcastle win this game by three goals to nil against Nottingham Forest. I've already talked about the Arsenal game. Chelsea versus Crystal Palace on the Monday. That is the last game of the week. They're coming off the win over Aston Villa. Their belief is very high at the moment, I'm telling you. Even though after losing the Wolves. Crystal Palace have been in trouble. Roy Hudson, if he loses this game, it could be out of the managerial position. He'll be sacked by Crystal Palace. I'm sure about that. Anyway, so who's going to win? I actually think Chelsea might draw this game. Charlie think that I might draw this game. It might end 3-3. You never know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree with my predictions, my thoughts on the games, and what are you expecting to see? This has been the Football Connect. This has been Sam. I'm back again. Do you are, are you excited about the, this blue card thing that is happening all over the world? Are you a fan of it? Let me know in the comment section. Who's going to win and how would the Premier League table look like? I think it's going to be Man City on top. Then Liverpool go back on top. Then I think that's how it will end the season. And I think we might have a surprise where we'll see Aston Villa going on top of Arsenal. If Arsenal don't perform well against the Hammers. That's what I just believe. Let me know in the comment section. Click the like button, subscribe to the connect. And like I said, Luton will move out of that side. This has been the football connect. The home. It is the home people that connects all the emotions, the 